And we're back. Oh, no, we are back. (laughs) Welcome. Right. You're listening to the neighbor ladies. Uh, We're here on the Alive and Social Network. Welcome back. I know that you've you've waited all week to hear what we've had to say, and we've waited all week to spend some time with you. Welcome to the neighbor ladies. We've got Suzanne. Hi. Hi, Suzanne. (laughs) We've got Karen J. Hello. And we've got Boston. Hey. I'm, yeah. Hi. I was gonna, just going to say, great to be here, man. Whoa. Yeah, we're all happy to be here. And, uh, and I'm Colleen. And Suzanne. Yes. We are back. We are. We're, we're back. <laughs> we're, sit, we're sitting down and, and, we're, and we're ready and raring to go. You had something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, though. I did. I, I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of PC culture. And um, Grant has a little clip for us that he's going to to play that will kind of lead us into that. Okay. Worry you. I was watching this Bruce Jenner story, and two days before he did the Diane Sawyer interview, Conan did a joke, and it's funny. And then he did the Diane Sawyer interview, and if Conan would have done the joke two days later, he would have been labeled a bigot. Um, does the climate worry you now? I've seen, I've talked to Chris Rock and, and Larry the Cable Guy. They don't even want to do college campuses anymore. I hear that all the time. I, I, I don't play colleges, but I hear a lot of people tell me, don't go near colleges. They're so PC. Hey, I'll give you an example. My daughter's 14. Uh, my mother, my mother, my wife says to her, um, well, you know, in the next couple of years, I, I think maybe you're going to want to hang around the city more on the weekends so you can see boys. You know, my daughter says, she says, that's sexist. Isn't that, you know, it's amazing. That, they, they, they just want to use these words. That's racist. That's sexist. So, am I on? I can't hear myself. So, uh, we're good. Yeah. Are we good? We're I can't good. hear myself. Okay. I can't yeah, hear myself I can't either. Hear myself it's either. the there phone. My headphones go. are turned down, but we're good. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. We can keep going right back and pretend oh we just God. ended that yeah, clip, okay. and I'll cool. edit this all out. So. Okay. Oh, Isn't that clip okay. just ended? Cool. Okay, yeah, so we good. hear that clip, and and because I work at a university, I think of you know PC stuff all the time, and and I think there are pros and cons to it, and I don't mean to make light of it, but... Um, the pros are, I remember when I went to a PC culture, um, uh, convention and well, that was, was Jerry Seinfeld in that clip. That was Jerry Seinfeld. Famed yes. comedian and he's Famed saying comedian. that he doesn't want to work colleges anymore because yes. there's too many PC people taking over colleges right. and it's just too difficult to perform comedy in front of right. them. Right. And I mm-hmm. say to Jerry Seinfeld, when does the Jewish fetus become a human? What? <laughs> when it graduates from medical school. <laughs> How do you like that one, Jerry? So, no, there's, there's a, a lot of controversy about it, but I think, you know, the best place that I ever went was that PC um, culture uh, convention in um, Orlando. And when I got off the plane, there were like 500 men in capes. Did I tell you this before? A PC culture convention? Yeah. What are you talking about? Are these guys about? in capes at pop the convention? Pop culture. Pop culture. Okay. Oh, pop culture convention. Yeah, because I like to think of it as pop culture. I don't understand what you're talking about I don't right either. Now. I'm what convention completely... did you go to? I was went it, to a pop culture. Were there like 500 culture. Batmans there? Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. So it All wasn't, in it capes. Wasn't, when you said PC, I thought it was going to be pol- uh, on political correctness. Yeah, it was so. supposed okay. to be. I took it way yeah. too seriously. Oh, so you yeah. went to the wrong convention? I thought you were at a yeah. Ku Klux Klan thing for a <laughs> yeah, second. You're like, capes. I got off the plane Whoa. and people were in capes, and I thought... Holy shit! She's that's a that's a bad. She vacation. put a bra back on, and it was all good. After it was that. all good. Yeah. Yes, it was all. So, what do you think? What do you think of PC stuff? As a comedian, I got to tell you, I I feel like, uh, well, what was the beginning of that clip? He was saying Conan O'Brien made a joke one day, and the next day it would have been considered insensitive. Well, okay, here, fellow, um, comedy is timing. Yes. Yep. And if somebody does have the wrong timing. Then it is too soon. Then it is too. It, 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 if, if it's the wrong timing, then it is insensitive. It's, comedy has always been time sensitive, yeah. no matter what. And can I say this? No comic likes to work colleges because college work sucks. Because generally, they're not paying to see the show. It's free, it's, it's some sort of deal that mm-hmm. you get through your college. Have you ever worked at college, Karen I have. Jay? I have. So I, did, I, I did comedy for the entire Concordia football team. Oh, that and they loved bad. it. I did well, a half an hour. 
yeah. you're hot and you're yeah. i'm sure no you but like great. i forgot that they were a christian college and i'm like swearing up a storm well, telling my sex jokes loved they loved it coach wow. mauer coach mauer at the time he was the head coach um he was like, Jesus, are you trying to get me fired? I don't and know then, anybody wow. that likes working colleges. But, you I know, mean, I could be. Not because of the PC stuff. It's just because it's just a hard audience to wrangle. Yeah. They're, they're mm-hmm. walking in and out of the room. They're, it's, yeah. just, it's just a difficult no, audience I, Well, to they were great for me. I liked yeah. it. I did St. Kate's with two other women. And we had 500 screaming women uh-huh. that wanted language and sex. And we were clean. So they did not want PC they at all. So they should PC have had me. And, yeah. you know, they were, I have to say, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. they should have had you. And, you know, um, this was a while ago. I'm not sure if you were born. And um, I got to say, um, we could have used a short Asian woman because we were thin lip blondes and we could have used some help. But we did it. We pulled it off with, you know, just being a little bit, you know, kind of almost going there and going over the edge. And instead of saying dick, I said weenie, you know. Um, <laughs> Because I, I wanted to get paid. It was a huge right. amount of money for me at the time. And, and you do think and about things like that. Catholics have a lot of money. All right. I got to say they is did. Is the PC movement ruining our, our jokey joke culture? I don't think is so. Is it ruining I, comedy? I think it only does if you're scared of it. I'm not scared. No. Like, you have to pay attention to what's going on, though, because there were people doing Caitlyn Jenner jokes locally um, before the interview. It wasn't just an isolated thing with a few national people. And then after that, you never heard a single word, and the, the transition was, okay, we're not going to touch this right now. This is somebody going through an experience, and we're just not going to go there. So Timing again. Yeah, timing. I want to get down yes. to the bottom of this. Can I, ju- I just want to say, it's white guys are afraid. That's yes. what it all boils down white to. White yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. any sort of minority, which, I mean, as a blue-eyed blonde, three of us are not, except we are not. We're all women, so that's mm-hmm. kind of a minority. It we is. still it is. don't it have, right. you know, the, it, it all boils down to Jerry Seinfeld feeling like, as a man, a, a rich white man, mm-hmm. right? And he's probably not in touch with his Jewishness, you know, whatever that means, right? He's right. Yeah. feeling put upon because mm-hmm. he can't he can't move with immunity like in like he used to be able to, and so these white guys don't know what to to say or how to act anymore it's freaking them out that they actually have to be sensitive to stuff right so then they immediately say well i don't know what to say or i i don't know i mean and then i think well okay fine figure it out you know and say a few bad things i mean that's how everybody has to figure it out i mean out. i don't think anybody goes into comedy wanting to offend their audience no but i think you have to figure out what's funny to you and then relay that to your audience in the best way that it's going to encapsulate everybody. And if it offends a few people, it's going to. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to. You know? But you just have to stay true to your voice. Right. You know, that's what I do. And right. And not just in comedy, even in conversation. Yes. The more genuine uh, you are, even if you're a genuine yeah, asshole. Yeah, because people can right. tell. People, <laughs> people can tell. People still love you. They love you because you're a genuine asshole. Right. You know? Exactly. You're real. Yeah, you people know? can tell. They All really right. can. Yeah, good talk. I like it. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about Caitlyn Jenner with Boston. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. Because, uh, yeah. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. What is your longest held prejudice that you may have? Mm, my longest held prejudice. Um, <clears throat> Lutherans are stupid and boring. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Rude. Ah, some of that's true. And loose. <laughs> loose? You never heard loose Lutheran? No. Oh, I have, and I think I've seen it live. <laughs> oh, wow. You've been spying on me? <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. And Karen, what is your longest held prejudice? Oh, I guess it would have to be prejudice is just like something you just don't like, right? Or believe in. Like, I think pedophiles are scum. Well, that's easy. Everybody yeah. knows no, pedophiles. I mean, scum. they're the reason I believe in the death penalty. Oh, there you go. That's good. Okay. That yeah. All right. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. In Boston, what is your longest held prejudice? Um, liver and onions. I've hated it, and I have a strong opinion about it, and I was forced to eat it as a child. And then when we would go to the Woolworths Blue Plate counter on Nicollet Avenue when we first moved to Minnesota, we went for the liver and onions, and it, it's I needed therapy. Thank you. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. And Colleen, what is your longest held prejudice? You know what I think? I think that a bunch of Lutherans should get t- together 
and round up all of the pedophiles and feed them, force feed them liver and onions right before they kill them. I think I know some liver, uh, liver and onions. I think they should kill them. Lutherans. My closest, my longest held prejudice, it, and here's just a prejudice, just a, a, a belief based on nothing but my own opinion. I, th- I do think that all Jewish people are funny. I think that they're inherently funny. <laughs> I, th- I think 99.9% of yeah, them. Yeah, and I don't There's know why that, that is. One that okay. I always wanted to be Jewish. I hate okay. I, would I don't want to actually be Jewish because I don't want to learn how to be Jewish. I can help, <laughs> I can help you guys. I'm half Jew- My mother was Jewish. Joni Kravitz, for God's sake. You've been saved. We'll go out tonight. Oh, my we'll God. It. Lenny Kravitz. Are they related? Joni Kravitz. Jo- I want to well, be. they could have been. I, I want to be, be Jewish because they run Hollywood. Well, there well, you go. Let's, I'll yeah. see that's what a I prejudice. Do. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> it, that's that's true, that's though. True. <laughs> it is true. It's, it's kind of true, but that would be a good prejudice. Metro oh. Goldwyn Meyer. I mean, weren't they, you know? And then who built Las Vegas? Hello, Kaching, Kaching. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I thought those were the Bugsy Italians. Bugsy Siegel. Oh, they weren't. No, no, it was the Jewish mob. The Italians couldn't get off the boat. I'm sorry. And now that's <laughs> prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. We've got Suzanne. Karen J. Boston. I'm Colleen. And uh, Boston, you wanted to talk about Caitlyn Jenner. Have you been watching Caitlyn Jenner's show? I, I love it. I'm addicted. Uh, I love people. You know, Caitlyn isn't addicted anymore. I'm sorry. No. She's, <laughs> she's 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 addicted. Addicted. She still has a dick. She does. Well, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys um, because this whole thing, this whole. Well, well, first of all, I was doing some anti-PC humor. She was doing (laughs) anti-PC humor. She's still connecting with it. I I love this. Okay. I I mean, she's fascinating in that um, this whole transition happens. And I'm I'm wondering, I mean, how do you do this? How do you wait till your kids are out of high school? You're married to somebody for 25 years. That's your best friend and business partner. And how do you do this? And Uh, um, how do you know it was his best friend? Uh, yeah, and how do we know it wasn't all a reality TV show? And I mean, look at look yeah. at how mad the little Kardashian girls got when when he said that that uh, Chris was mean. <laughs> well, we all watch the show. We know she's mean. Yeah, you know. I mean, we weren't uh, speaking out of term there. Well, I, I don't know. I think she's she's. I, I wonder um, all this stuff and putting together a human being, uh, a, a new person that she has become over the last year. Um, is she getting any professional help? And, you know, who's her support group? Is she really, the, you know, she's, she's doing a lot for the trans community and the gay community. And to go from Bruce Jenner, athlete, to this, you know, what, what do you guys think about that? Do you think this is I just think, a, an act? You no, know? Uh, I think well, no, Bruce has always felt... De- he always, inside? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know he Didn't says Didn't you that, watch the special? I, d- I did. But, you know, I mean, it's just, to me, it's like suddenly, suddenly, you know? I well, think it's because the visual, yeah. the visual is so striking. He right. was yeah. a handsome yeah. man. Yeah. He was the guy in the Wheaties box right. that everybody kind of had a crush on. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden, he's this beautiful, but, eloquent woman. But even right. in between then Is there and anything now, he can't do? I know. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. You I, know. I mean, I need to say this. I really like her. Um, I think she's intelligent, she's she, sensitive, she's outstanding in that she's working very, very hard, she's making appearances, she's showing up and doing work that needs to be done. Personally, I just wonder, gosh, how long can you do this? I mean, you, you know what I mean? This is some I feel like she's already in a stressful situation yeah. and to have it put yeah. on crack, so and, to speak, and that then, way. And then the latest controversy that people are trying to be politically correct about with the Caitlyn Jenner conversation and frankly, you know, they're saying, well, is she really, really doing the movement any good? Because now she's decided to keep her man parts. And, oh, you know, I think I that mean, doesn't matter. A, no, that's, I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters either. Yeah, I, a lot okay, of people okay. don't go through the full procedure either because they can't, they've been on a waiting list forever, or they just okay. decide they not just to. they just don't want to. Right. Well, we're clearing right. up some things I think other people were worried about. I think she wants to be. <laughs> Why is everyone worrying about Caitlyn Jenner's penis? Well, no, seriously, it's, it's, it's out there. It's on social media. I mean, is she real or not real? And people aren't being mean about it. That's it's the kind of stuff she's opening herself up to by right. being so public with right. the change. Yes. And that's change. what I worry about for, for a, a person that that's a lot, a lot of stuff to handle. Did you know that Joe Jackson, um, you know that, that singer Joe Jackson? Yeah. Right, right. That he lives 
as a trans woman in Germany? Didn't know. He no, Wait, did not Joe know Jackson, that. Michael Jackson's dad? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Oh, no the Joe singer. Ja- the, the singer Joe Jackson. Oh, really? What mm-hmm. was the name of his group? I forget what is, uh, the, but I was, I just heard that and I thought, huh. And uh, apparently he lives in this smaller community. Right. And it's widely known that he's, that's, that's, that's who, who he is. is and yeah. he has this mm-hmm. other identity. And so, I mean, the only other way for Caitlyn Jenner to, to have done that is to completely recede from the public eye or find a small community. And, and who knows how long that would have been um, accepted. Joe Jackson's right. kind of an obscure musician at this point. You know, there's no way Bruce Jenner connected to Chris Jenner and that whole, the rest of those people, there's no way that he could do anything private. No, and, and it takes, you know, to, to trans takes a long time. I mean, this, it, it's years. And, you know, part of, part of going through that change is, uh, is having therapy, you know, so... Mm. It's, you know, it's not just something that somebody just all of a sudden decides. Yeah, I think it's been on her mind for a long, yeah, long time. Yeah, and she time. did mm-hmm. mention that uh, in the Diane Sawyer interview and talked about in her first marriage some of the things that happened right. and um, going through the hormone therapy and then stopping the hormone therapy, and I think it was pretty informative. I think her, her story is so encouraging to people going through the thought process and I think so many um, young people, you know, age 12, 13, and 14, um, Got a lot of questions answered. Yeah, you know, I do too. Um, I, th- I think that that's yeah. Been overall, a real I think it's helpful, and I think it's not confusing. I think it's like, oh, okay, this is a possible thing. This is why I feel this way. Uh-huh. This right. is where I can go. And they've been very clear at the end of the Diane Sawyer interview of making sure that there was a public service number, a reputable public service. Well, number yeah, because a lot of trans call. kids or kids that are confused end up committing suicide right and and she and she did cover that pretty well with diane and and um also in one her first episode she brought that up okay so maybe uh, uh, this is just a fun thought as i was thinking about this um conversation on caitlin jenner i would love to see her do a new cover on the wheaties box yeah i think it would be a really outstanding thing to it's a redo great idea. it with, to her, see her. with her with her penis out no <laughs> Well, I don't. She Why could. Not? She could have it, uh, you know, in you know, a lovely, out. sexy outfit, you like know? with the bulge. I think that would yeah, be hot. Yeah, I Why mean, not? Yeah, it would be. It there would be. I just, like, but I think it would Caitlyn be. Caitlyn okay. Jenner untucked. Okay. Okay. So here's why I want the Wheaties box, and I need to tell you this. Um, one of the things when I got when I got married, okay. I had to get rid of some things. You know, when you merge households, mm-hmm. I had a very old box of Wheaties on it. With, the, with Bruce Jenner, and I was asked to get rid of it. And I would like to bring back a new Wheaties box with Caitlyn Jenner. I think it would really be awesome. I, I think like you should it. write her. I think I will. I what, think write we'll to Wheaties, people. Good talk, you guys. All right, when we come back, our favorite gay trailblazers. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. And Suzanne, which Kardashian would you have sex with? Caitlin. Quick, I like it. All right. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Which Kardashian would you have sex with? Ooh, Caitlin or Kim or <laughs> Chloe. Um, yeah, the others are too young. Courtney. Nah, not, Courtney doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston, and Boston, the question of the night, which Kardashian would you sleep with? It would have to be Chris. I like a mean. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and she'd probably have the same amount of facial hair that i have so it'd really be equal time it'd be beautiful i can see it now maybe i'll write to her after the show yeah there you go meet your neighbor lady colleen and colleen which kardashian would you have sex with chloe all the way she's my favorite one because she always looks like she's just a she's a little bit not not with the rest of the, the crowd yeah and I like that she's yeah. got some meat on her bones. Uh-huh. Yeah, she has, a, her cake. she has a different dad, right? Oh, Does that's a, that was the rumor, but they've they've done all the tests. The oh, DNA have they? tests. Oh yeah, oh, no. the birther's gone through oh, no. that. Because no. she does yeah. look different. Oh, she well, she looks happy for God's sakes. Right. Yeah, because I don't think she's yeah. and she's curvaceous. Food. My mm-hmm. God, you could set a table on that butt, but she's skinny. She's my favorite. Remember Kirby Puckett? Same scenario. <laughs> or or Colleen's butt. Oh, come on. I do have a nice spot. She does. I, I do. say salsa dancing tonight, girl. All right. <laughs> Woo. 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Neighbor Ladies. Uh, we've got Suzanne, Karen J, Boston, and me, Colleen. And Karen, you wanted to talk about our favorite uh, gay trailblazers. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking about that, and I was like, well, obviously Aaron Rodgers. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all know he is that secretly was a gay. Group, right? Yes. Um, actually, my favorite one of all time would have to be RuPaul. Yes. Oh yeah, RuPaul. Yeah, like Cover Ru. girl. <laughs> I just Can you... I met I met him at the gay no. 90s. Yes. How oh, tall my God. Is he? In the 90s. Oh, he's tall. Is he like and I, seven and he feet was, tall with those shoes? He's six something. Yeah. I don't know. But he was dressed as a in his male. Oh whatever. really? Mm-hmm. He's handsome as a man. And he was too. I think he was recruiting for his first um, season of Drag Race. Oh yeah. So I met him because a, my friend of mine knew him. And he was just the nicest man. And he's so beautiful as a man and a woman. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, my yeah. God, I hate you. Wow. I can, I can <laughs> barely funny. get one but of them down. But he's so nice. And he's funny. He's yeah. funny. He's honest. Uh-huh. You know, he's like, because I was like, my friend at the time, I'm not going to say who it is because that would be mean. But he was like, yeah, she's got, s-. he tried to give her makeup tips, right? He so tried he, to give RuPaul makeup tips? No, he tried to give my friend makeup tips because oh. she wasn't, let's just say she was conventionally unattractive. Okay. And then I That's was like, PC. I said, what about me? And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, girl, you have great bone structure. You're fine. <laughs> you got nothing to worry about. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but he's like, but her on the other hand, you know, you can only do so much with what you got. <laughs> wow. I mean, but I loved him. Yeah, he was just, he's honest. He's so honest. I love him. And then, of course, you know, now it would be Caitlyn Jenner, too. But, but RuPaul is my all-time favorite. Mm-hmm. How about you? Mm-hmm. I like Hollywood Lunch. She was a, uh, another trans <sighs> woman. From she was a Warhol superstar, and I, if you ever get a chance to find this book, it's a low life in high heels, the Hollywood lawn story. And she it, it, it was it, what, what's the um, uh, do 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 that song, uh, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, yeah, Lou Reed, right? Oh. Um, Holly is in that song, her okay. a little bit of her oh. story. Oh. Right, shaved her legs, and then he was a she. She right. said, "Hey, babe, take a walk, walk on, on the, the wild, wild side." This is this uh, woman's trans woman story, and uh, she happened to be at the uh, at the bar when the Stonewall riots mm. started, and I I just love this woman's story, and she's still around, and she hangs out in the burlesque community now, okay. and she was. Um, did, did shows in the same bathhouses that Bette Midler cool. worked in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And never really, why I like her is because she never really made it big. I mean, RuPaul is a huge star, yeah. and so is Caitlyn Jenner's a huge star. And Hollywood Lawn's sort of a workaday, like, yeah. never really quite made it, mm-hmm. you know, but she did. I mean, she's, she's solvent, but I don't know, I like her. Yeah. How, yeah. About, how about you, Suzanne? Hey, I, Divine. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, divine. Yeah. I really oh gosh. And then yeah. um John, John Waters. Waters was yeah. I, I think yeah. Waters is yeah. Fantastic. God, I love all his movies. Right. It, it just became necessary to go to anything that had John Waters at, right. and when he would come to the Twin Cities, he would um he would present the movies. He'd have like an exclusive say at the varsity. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he was just like he just loved all of all of us that would come. Be, the, the theater would be full, and you know sometimes he would bring Divine with him. Right. Oh my God, hairspray. I mean, yeah. not not with John Travolta. Divine. That was hairspray. I know who else I like. That's underrated. I like that too. But John Leguizamo. Is John Leguizamo gay? No, he's trans, isn't he? Is he? I thought he just dressed up for comedy, like Milton Berle. No, I, well actually, I think he might be bi. Okay, know. we got to solve that. I think that bisexuals oh, wow. are hot. Oh, yes, yeah. they oh, are, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's something mysterious about it. Yeah. Who's your favorite gay trailblazer? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's not a celebrity. Um, I, I uh, was fortunate enough, my uh, mom ran a restaurant in Monterey, California, and the guy she hired as the dishwasher was a local theater man. His name was George, and he was all over the Bay Area, performing and he and I had started doing comedy this was in 1983 when I was six and um (laughs) he was just an amazing guy because you know I mean it was 
the era of AIDS and things you didn't talk about. Right. And he was, um, he just introduced me to everybody and he taught me about what being gay was all about. I really didn't know. I, I really, yeah. seriously, I was so naive. I, th I thought that that was just something that people talked about that really didn't happen. So, uh, you know, George was just an amazing guy, and he told my mother, he goes, Karen really needs an education into the lifestyle that is socially acceptable. And he taught me how to dress, and he's the one that got me into the eyeliner. He would be very upset because my makeup is very bad today. And eyeliner is my life. What can I say? Thank you, George. Thank you, gay trailblazers. Thank you, li neighbor ladies. Oh, yeah, before we go, I should just say John is not gay. John Leguizamo's not gay? I guess right. not. He's still hot. Either he is way. hot. Either He's way. Hot. So there is a chance. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's a yeah. chance, ladies. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Do I have time to go pee really fast? Yeah, just go for it. Okay. We'll just, like I said, it's just recording, but I can edit out. Don't rush yourself. Take your time. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're on air. We're still air, recording. But I just, He's going to edit this yeah, all out. Yeah, it's totally fine. So that one went about 24 minutes? It was 25, but with the editing I'm going to do, it'll probably bring it down to about 24 exactly. Great. Yeah, so I figure if you go shoot for 20, if you go 25, that's fine. Yeah. Um, maybe it might help out if we try to set, you know, because if you have three segments, you know, try to do, like I said, you know, uh, seven minutes per. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe if I do it for, because right. if I say six 50 minutes or 20 minutes in, it's kind of like, you know, right. where are we at? Six really? to seven minutes per topic. But then, um, you know, so in figuring it out, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, is it, it's really going or somebody's right in the middle of a story and then, then somebody, I don't want to stop it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, Karen Jay's gonna do. You don't have anything in this next one. In this next one, okay. Yep. Um, you oh, have. That's enough of me. You have. Uh, uh, are we? Is the world becoming too sexual, Suzanne? That's the last topic. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. that's and right. I'm gonna start us out with: um, Should sex work be decriminalized? Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you think your microphone was off? Could you it, not hear yourself? No, I couldn't hear myself. Maybe yeah, I couldn't hear myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really low. All right, well, we'll turn the headphones up in general. That might okay, help. It's cool. because what happens yeah, when I turn down the volume for the, the, yep. the... I hit the wrong... Oh, okay, it that's cool. As I get... As long as our, our audio is cool later. It's actually It'll be counts. good, yeah, yeah, it'll work out. It'll cool, well, thank you. thank you. Dandy. So okay. is our next question going to be biggest pet peeve during sex? No. Oh. Who is the sexiest man? Who is the sexiest woman? For me. No, we wanted to change... Uh, You're talking about my question, Yes, right? yeah. we wanted to change it. Right? Yeah. Are we? I thought We're we changed ch the fourth one. Right. Okay, so what's the second? What are we changing in the third one? The, f the first question for this segment is biggest pet peeve during sex. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, because then we go into should sex work be decriminalized, right? Well, no, sex work, I'm going to start out with sex work. Okay. Should that oh, be that's decriminalized? Right. And then biggest pet peeve during sex. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to do kinkiest fantasy. And then what's after that? Is the world becoming too sexual? Was that you? That was no, the that's the third topic. So yeah, the yeah. next question, though. Yeah, yeah. No, the next question is uh, if you could protest anything. You're talking about my questions, right? Yeah, no, the protest already happened. Um, let me get a... Uh, Wait, the protest... No, we never did that one. Yeah, yeah that's did. no, that's no. If you could protest anything, what would it be? You we said already did it. No. Here's this. We had, for, for this one, we had, who is the sexiest man? Who is the sexiest yeah. woman? Yeah. And then what's the best excuse you've ever used to get out of sex? Right. But we're not using this. But way. now we're going to change it, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. You want to change it to... Um, biggest the, pet the peeve. First question is biggest pet peeve during sex. Got that. And the second one uh, could be, um, what's the best excuse you've ever used to get out of sex? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then going back to segment four, I'm going with that protest question. But then we can talk about that later. That if you could protest anything, what would it be? Right. The, okay. That'll be like late. Right. That's, That's the last, the last one. All right, okay. so we're going into segment three here. 
Hello, Everybody hello. Ready to go? I can't yeah. hear my voice. Can you? Can you hear I now? I can hear. I can hear now. Yep. Yep. I can yep. hear. Is that yeah. good for you guys? Yep. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies on the Alive and Social Network. We are The Neighbor Ladies here enjoying a cup of cheer and, uh, and some cake and the company of my, uh, my favorite ladies, Suzanne. Hi. And Karen J. Hello. And Boston. Hey. And me, Colleen. Hey, you guys. Let's get sexy. Woohoo! We you know, love it, it. Okay, I don't know. You ever pay attention to uh, Amnesty International? Yes. yes. I pay attention to them maybe twice a year when I start. To, the, I get the canvassers in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Asking me to give whatever I have. Right. And then I, I throw a few bucks. Seems like a good uh, organization to me. But uh, just this happened yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it this is it's not often that a liberal newspaper like The Guardian rails against an organization like Amnesty International. But last week, the paper ran a stinging editorial questioning the wisdom of this human rights group. It said Amnesty would make a serious mistake if it advocated the decriminalization of prostitution. And this is a decision that the group's International Council will vote on later. Um, and I, I kind of, I agree. I'm going to have to say, I agree. Amnesty's leaked proposal says decriminalization would be based on the human rights principle that consensual sexual conduct between adults is entitled to protection from state interference so as long as violence or child abuse or other illegal behavior isn't involved. I think it's got to be decriminalized, personally. I think it's true. I think it's real. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I do, too. It's only hurting the women that they, that the criminalization part mm-hmm. is supposed to protect. Absolutely. And it also keeps, it, it's like bootlegging alcohol. Right. You mm-hmm. know, who won on when, when the boot, the bootleggers won when with prohibition. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And plus if I have something, if I want to do something that's not illegal in my private time, why should I am able to sell any other professional? If I bake a cake, I can sell a cake. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see why. And I think it's because uh, it could be possibly too empowering for women. And I think that's <laughs> why I have that. I agree. No, I'm serious. I, no, I know. I, I think it's better. I think it will be better. I mean, it would be better. I think it's for women because not just because what they do in private is their own business, mm-hmm. but I think it will also help protect them. Yes. It will definitely help protect them. And I think Amnesty International is really brave in doing this. And and the the secretary general for their spokesperson said that sex workers are one of the most marginalized groups in the world who in the most instances face constant risk of discrim- discrimination, violence and abuse and that's true. Right. And it's trafficking by the way. It would totally cut down on trafficking yes. because yes. you know the 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 guys who are hiring sex workers, oh, let's go to this poor crying woman who's you know in this corner or I'll go to this le- you know this legal place where everyone's been tested and right. it's well lit and I don't have to feel like a creep. Yes. And did you know in the military it's actually prostitution is actually okay. It's not a crime and they use it to boost the morale of the troops. It's been going on for for years forever. For years. So yeah. why not boost the morale of everybody and make it legal everywhere? Well, right? you know, ter- you, let's get back to trafficking for just a minute. Aren't we in the United States, aren't we one of the top 10 countries where trafficking is 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 a major issue? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 aren't we supposed to be have freedom? Ha ha ha. You know, it's just I yeah, let, let's just get it handled. They, they are very brave to right. take that on. I think so too. You know. Yeah, and wouldn't it be better? I, I think to a degree. I mean, I know that trafic- trafficking of minors is a huge issue. I yes. mean, and right here in Minneapolis. I mean, if you, I think if we Googled trafficking of young adults, we'd find we're right up there with the rest of the planet. And right, oh, it just galls me. You mm-hmm. know, right in your own neighborhood, ten miles away. Yeah. Versus so, if it were legal, that would. I that think w- it would I, discourage it would take a huge it. dent in, yeah. the, in the trafficking part of it, and all the people that are currently making their living on the souls and the tears of people who don't have any choice or would never go into this sort of work, you know. But then there's another group of people who would go into that sort of work. Mm-hmm. And you know what? God bless them. Right. More power to you. If that's what you want to do, 
go right ahead. And I don't, yeah. I actually, have you ever known any prostitutes? I have. I have too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. Very sure. nice people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Male prostitutes, female prostitutes, trans prostitutes, all very nice people, all very smart. Yes. They've seen things that other people haven't, and they've learned things from them. So, and not just techniques, they've just learned about the human condition. Yes. Yes. You know, because a lot of times it's more than about sex. It's about being, it's, it's about the intimacy. Yes. You know, that's what I've, that's what I've heard. <laughs> or the companionship. You know. mm-hmm. Well, yeah. they're, not, they're not getting the intimacy level in their own circle of relationships, and they seek it elsewhere. And I just, you know, I mean, it's, it's a huge talk. Well, frankly, in my wacky little neighborhood, uh-huh. we've done a lot of talking about that. You, know? you have? There's, oh, well, yeah, absolutely. You know, we're suburb- suburban housewives, you know, we, um, and, and a lot of them have great experiences traveling all over the place. They've got guys that travel, some of them are on their second marriage. Some, uh, one, one of, and I'll speak in a general way, but we have friends that have, have sought out the needs of others, so to speak. Mm-hmm. That's prostitution, you know. And it's, it's interesting. Like on their vacation? Viewpoints. On vacation, Where sure. they paid or for it? Or on a business trip where they paid for it. Sure. Yeah. And finding out, you know. So it's, and, and it was a need. You know, are you going to stay in the marriage when you find out something like that? You know? I, I dated a guy once that asked me if, he said, you want to do a threesome? You want to do a threesome? And I said, yeah, okay, sure. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> because I never thought he, first of all, I never thought he, you know, this guy was so socially backward that I didn't think he'd ever find anybody. <laughs> and so then he I did? Thought, no, he didn't. Oh. And I knew, I was, so I was right in my assessment that he was so socially backward he would never find anybody. Like that, that job would totally have to come to me, right? And in guys' minds, the, they're having a three, like the women just can't wait to tear each other's clothes off, you know? <laughs> Actually, if I want to have sex with a woman, which I have, by the way, have totally had sex with a woman, I don't want to do it in front of a guy for their benefit because right. I always feel like a, I feel like an animal at the zoo. Like, oh, that's how they do it. That's how they really want it done. <laughs> First of all, let me say this, guys. You need to take more time, and you need to move slower, and you need to have patience. And if you can figure out those three things, then you're having sex like a lesbian. And you need to go downtown. Right, you need to go downtown. And stay That's down there and for a while. Yeah, and right. you need to Until we're done. And let's stay in the room. <laughs> but this guy. Afterwards. This guy let's said, stay in let's the room have a after sex. And then he said, yeah. well, let's, I'm going to take you to Vegas, and we're going to hire a prostitute. Oh. And I said, you know what? I'm sure that there are really nice prostitutes out in Vegas because it's illegal. <laughs> so I was very happy about that. But No. I don't. I didn't want. I couldn't. I had to. I had to stop. I I had a threesome recently. You did? Yep, with a Mexican and another woman, who shall remain nameless. Of course. But yeah, I know. But she wasn't a. a, This might have to go into the next. She's bi. Well, right. But okay. So we were going to talk about kinkiest fantasies later. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, okay. Well, that's a, we could you just know do what? that. We can Let's just... take a break and come back with that. Can okay. we do that? Yes. All right. Okay. okay. When we come back, we're going to hear about. We're going to hear about kinkiest fantasies. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, <laughs> Suzanne. What is your biggest pet peeve while having sex? Biggest pet peeve while having sex is my chihuahua needing to go outside and go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's not a euphemism for anything, is it? <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> is it the size of a chihuahua? That's what I like about you thinking women, man. You just take it right to the next level. You really do. Now we got small dogs peeing. I love it. <laughs> Poor Grant. I really do. I love you guys. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. And Karen J., what is your biggest pet peeve while having sex? Well, for me... I would have to say when uh, the Mexican is fucking the hell out of me and he's like really getting into it and he's like, whose pussy is this? And I'm like, bitch, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't know whose pussy you're fucking right now? <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest pet peeve. Men. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. And Boston, I'm going to love asking you this question. What is your biggest pet peeve while having sex? Well, I... I hate to tell you, but I don't really appreciate it when he answers the phone. <laughs> oh my God. What? You want to talk about a discount in needing therapy? Answer the phone. Okay? 
You know, that'll tell you where my life's been lately. Oh, it's going to be a great vacation next month, let me tell you. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. And Colleen, what is your biggest pet peeve while having sex? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like it when uh, I can see myself in a mirror anywhere. I, I like to cover all of the mirrors in the room because w once I see myself, it's, it's all gone, I think. You know, because then it's all about me sucking in my guts and clenching my ass cheeks so that nothing wiggles. Is this, anybody <laughs> else have that? You know, because then I'm worried about what I look like, and I'm, it takes right. me out of the moment. Right. I don't like to look. I like to keep my eyes closed. <laughs> I we, like to close my eyes and I should totally tell myself I'm Beyonce guy. or something. No, no, you have to be, like, because uh, my spouse, at, uh, if he gets over this phone thing, I got to tell you, we both have really thick glasses. We just take the glasses off and shut out the light. He doesn't know what's fallen, and I don't know what's fallen down on him with age, if you know what I mean. I like it. Awesome. Yeah. Groping in the dark. <laughs> Exchanging glances. Welcome back. You're listening to the neighbor ladies. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to get sexy. We're going to stay. We got sexy. We're going to get, we're going to stay sexy. Um, <clears throat> Karen J. Yes. You recently had a, th a threesome. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Now, was that a fantasy of yours? Yes. Okay. But it's also a fantasy of his. All right. Um, and she's a friend of mine. I've known her like she was a ch like from my childhood. There you go. So, but she basically how it happened was we reconnected and she was like, "You're hot. I've always liked you." And I was like, "What?" And I was like, and then she met, you know, the Mexican and she's like, "He's hot," you know. And I was like, and you know, like things were kind of boring. I'll just be honest in the in the bedroom. It was getting kind of boring and now this is, is Yeah, it's like there's only like seven or eight <laughs> positions we always do. <laughs> It's kind Seven of like, or eight? That's yeah. a lot. Is it? <laughs> That's excellent. That's excellent. not a lot over 10 years, okay? I think in the suburbs, we, they might be up to three. Well, anyways, so things were kind of like boring. And I was like, well, what, what the hell, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, it didn't go the way, like, it didn't go, like, basically, like, we served him, serviced him. He loved that part. I'm sure he did. Um, Peg. And then the rest <laughs> oh of it, God. like, I just couldn't finish it couldn't go down on her. Cause okay. It's a little musty, if you know what I'm saying. There you are. Um, but, you know, she... Every flower has a signature scent. And if that was my biggest fear, is actually, like, of, of, like, that was, like, oh, my God, what if it stinks? You needed the hot tub <laughs> of the shower to <laughs> and then the procedure. I didn't say anything. I was just kind of like, oh. Uh, I was like, well, why don't you two have sex? You know, because he was wearing a condom or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, Okay. So he starts fucking her. Of course. Fucking the hell out of her. And she's loving it. She's like, oh, yeah, your man's fucking the shit out of me. And I'm just like, I didn't, like, I wasn't, like, I was kind of getting into it. Like, it turned me on. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? Do I love this man or not? I'm letting him fuck my friend. I don't think it's, I don't think you have to say, do I love this man or not? I mean, there's a. Do you know what I mean, though? You're a voyeur. You're a voyeur. But so I, he's providing you a, a visual. He and your friend are providing you a visual yeah. that you find exciting. I don't think it has anything to do with cheating at that point. No. Or, or but then after after not. it was over, you know, I was like, well, how would you know? Of course, she wants to do it again, and I'm just kind of like, I don't know. And I asked, you know, the Mexican. I was like, well, what'd you think? And of course, he wants to do it again. He's like, well, I really liked when you both were going sucking my dick. You know what I mean? Well, of course. And then, then thank God he did. <laughs> I was like, duh. And then he goes, next time I want the girl to be hotter. The other girl to be hotter. Oh. Peg. Boop, 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 He's when? fired from that scenario. Yeah. Right. I don't so think like that's guy, never going to happen the again. Guy, no. The guy, he doesn't deserve it. But my, no. kinky, my kinkiest fantasy of all time has to be, I've always had a crush on Crunch, you know, the Timberwolves mascot. So him, like, taking me in the, like, during halftime or whatever. Just, You're a furry. No, I'm not. But the, it's just something about the animal thing. <laughs> like... Just him taking me in the bathroom and doing me doggy style in front of the mirror. Like, that's a f <laughs> one of my fantasies. And most people I know are like, that's nothing. And I'm like, well, that's my kinkiest fantasy. It really it's is. Wow. You, you have to admit that that has furry undertones. No, I don't like furry guys. And overtones. No, the furry is that that's the thing. People who wear um, uh, bear suits oh, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, the other that's what yeah. they call that. They call it. Furries. furries. Oh, oh, yeah. furries. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean I'm into bestiality or anything. No, no, no. Like, are you, you going go like to go to Build-A-Bear and come home <laughs> with a live one? You know what I'm saying? 
right? They're like, why, well, why, does, why wasn't it all the way sewed in the middle? <laughs> That's right. That's I don't know what you're talking the about. The stuffing's <laughs> coming out. Oh, my God. Oh, and then you know what? You can get, if you're at Build-A-Bear, you can also get those little sound things you put in their heart. Right. Oh, what would your song be for that fantasy? Oh, sorry. I went too far like, in my mind. Get your freak on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Get your freak cool. on. What about, what about you, Suzanne? What's yeah. your kinkiest fantasy? My kinkiest fantasy. I, I guess it would have to be Cruella DeVille and oh, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Bring in those Dalmatians. The dogs. Oh, why not? Is it, a, is it that you like things with spots? She's backtracking. She's back. We've got so one, would you like? We got Karen J over here. She's willing to, to lay it all out. This is what I did. This is what I have and, a fantasy. And, and then Suzanne, and you're, you're backing up. You're not saying she's anything, going to Suzanne. Cartoon Land again. Yeah. Colleen. I mean, okay. No. So if you've got the dogs, are you gonna like lather yourself in peanut butter? <laughs> Or what dog butter. food are you rolling in for these little bow you know? wows? <laughs> what about I, what about you, Colleen? My, one of my fa fantasies. Your Ooh, kinkiest. I have my, oh my kinkiest and, fantasies. And we know you're a freak, Jesus. so come I am on. a freak. I am a freak. I well, I had a I had a fantasy, long time fantasy, that <laughs> that I would have a, a male locked in chastity. And mm. yeah, and it's then you a would thing. Te tease him. It's a thing, and I would keep him teased. <laughs> Evil. Uh, I know. I love I have, it. I have kind of an evil. I yeah. have an evil streak, and I would keep him teased, and I would keep the key around. My it's there is a whole subculture of this, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. and and uh, which is it provided me many pleasurable hours of of entertainment uh, all by myself. Look at and her uh, eyes gleam. I know, glowing over That's there. That's right. You She's... ever see me wearing a necklace with a key on it? You better wonder what's Whoa. happening. Well, that'll <laughs> be next week's There's episode. There's little cages that you can get for. <laughs> Yeah, the, the junk, little junk cages. Yeah, and uh, and they totally are uh, hygienic and and they work and they're they're they keep it, you the the fellow can use their uh, their penis for urination and whatnot and and you can just keep it all locked up. And, really? Yes. Wait, how do they use it for urination if it's locked? Because there's up? it's like a cage. There's holes in it, but oh, you yeah, you've yeah, got okay. it all locked up and you can keep somebody locked up for. I mean, I've actually talked to people online about this. You can keep people locked up for months. Oh, really? I know, but then they go crazy and they'll do anything for you. Talk about going downtown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right, Boston, what about you? Well, I, I'm like so blown away. I'm really, wow. I don't oh. know. I have to tell you, we, when you started talking about threesomes, I, I needed to just confess to something. I'm a late bloomer to some of these terms. And the first time I heard the term threesome, I thought, well, why don't we just get four for dinner? <laughs> instead of three. That would be better conversation. And I got to say, I didn't get asked out again <gasps> by that guy. Um, I got to say. And um, never saw him again. So your kinkiest fantasy is? My, uh, stay I, on task. I can't stay on task with this because, you know, I've been hanging out at that Lutheran church. I think it's had no effect. They're stupid. No, Come I'm not Come on, you have to share. Two of the neighbor ladies, I think, are too afraid to say... I uh, hey, I will tell you, I, I will tell you, it, I, I, I know this sounds really crazy, but I really, um, I like a man in uniform. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I like Who a man in uniform, well, and I like him to take it off, starting with the hat. Um, we have a few at home, the uniforms. Oh. What's your favorite? And I would say I like the fireman. Oh. Yeah, the firemen, firemen are hot. Always been a fantasy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it goes back to my burning a roast at the condo <laughs> on a Labor Day weekend. You did it and on purpose. I did. And my husband, my, 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 we were married then. He came home to the burnt down wall of the condo. The roast was hell. And four hunky firemen in the house. And, uh, you know, that's when it started. I, I you know, I'll tell the kids. <laughs> They're this. all good looking. <laughs> They were, there's and you know, never a bad looking. No, there's yeah. not. No, and because they're heroes. You know, yes. we lived in a condo complex, and as the firemen, you know, because everybody could smell it. We were out in the, you know, all the old ladies are out, and they're looking at the firemen, you know. So I was very popular that Labor Day <laughs> because I had, you know, thrilled everybody. And, you know, after that, that's that man in uniform thing. I absolutely love it. And, you know, he likes a chick in a uniform, too. There's nothing sexier. Then at the time, a pregnant woman in a police office. Oh, some outfit. guys are really into pregnant chicks. They were, yeah, I yeah, got to tell. I, you know, I, yeah. I'm, I was kind of old fashioned. So I did, did I. Yeah. Freaks, I, man. Yeah, I, people come up and rub your stomach, a guy, and says, you're hot. And your husband's standing right next to you. And I'm like looking at him going, nobody hit on me when I was single like this. 
Right. You know, it was good. It's the pheromones. Yeah. The pheromones. It yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's just wild. Anyway, so so I'm kind of boring, you know. And again, I do think being in the dark really helps out a lot when we, because both of us have these really thick right. lenses. When we come back, uh, we're going to discuss, have we gotten too sexy? You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. Suzanne, what is the best excuse you have ever used to get out of sex? Uh, best excuse I've ever used. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of a yogurt douche. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> yum. <laughs> yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Karen J., what is the best excuse you have given to get out of sex? Well, typically with the Mexican, it's just that I just say, hey, well, let's talk first. And then he goes right to sleep, plays possum. But the other one would just be sometimes I say, well, I pulled my back out pulling weeds. Oh, there you go. It's a good one. Yeah. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. And Boston, what is the best excuse you have given to not have sex? Well, in our house, all you have to do is say, I really need to share my feelings on this subject and now. And that's pretty much a deal breaker right there. <laughs> feelings. And you can hear that little Morris Albert song in the background. Yeah. Feelings. La, 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 la. Okay. Thank you. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. And Colleen, what is the best excuse you have used to not have sex? I'm constipated. That's, that's <laughs> the best. It works for everything. <laughs> I'm going to try because that. Nobody wants to talk about it because it's embarrassing. And they figure if you've admitted to it. You know, and, and then just be willing, you know, be willing to like go into detail. Totally mood, mood killer. It's awesome. That will keep them away from the back door for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. <laughs> You're listening to the neighbor ladies, Suzanne, Karen J, Boston. We've been all over the place. Uh, Colleen and Grant. Poor Grant. Hey, guys. Hey. This has been awesome. <laughs> I've been taking some notes. <laughs> Just That's a always couple. good. That's right. Yeah, That's good. I'm yeah. learning. I'm learning. I'm I'm, de- I'm definitely going to be a better man because of this. <laughs> oh. I think so. Oh, you are. We're so glad we can help young America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the millennials um, aren't they so cute? They're adorable. Suzanne, <laughs> do you, yes. Do you think? Do you think the the world has gotten too sexual now? Because we're we're all maybe a little bit too uh, open and and free with our discussions. No. No? I don't think so. You don't I think, think so? You know, High five. it's it's kind of a funny <laughs> thing Where's because I think I think we like to say we've become very sexual, but why is it that everybody is turning elsewhere? You know, it's because we really don't talk about what we want sexually. You know? So I didn't start talking about what I want sexually until I was 40 years old. Yes. Bingo. Yes. I'd have to say the same for me. Wow. Yeah, I would have to say it wasn't until after I had kids and I was like, okay, am I going to spend the rest of my life like this? Right. Not saying, I mean, if you're really honest with the person you're with, right. what's the next layer of intimacy? Where is the crap in your relationship? Not to go talk about constipation, clean, but right. I mean, it's like it's like okay. So you got You got to put it out there. You and do. We didn't have a counselor. I mean, and, and I don't. Th- I think. And it's very risky. Yeah, it, it totally is because you're looking at you know, hey, maybe it's a divorce. It might be too right. much. Might be too much for the person. Right. If you want to go if you're li- if that you're whole, 40, you know. The, and I think that whole thing about religion sort of plays plays into it. You know, it's like when I was thinking about this, I was I I went to the Christian Broadcasting Network, the CBN, and they had this list of things that um, they wanted to warn people about. What when, when do you need to flee? And the very first thing on this list when you need to flee from um, intimacy is when you find yourself thinking about a friend or a coworker, a ministry partner or a counselor and how much you would enjoy being with this person and they say flee i mean and if it's if it's what if it's only <laughs> I don't know enjoy that. being with the person i mean can you ma- i mean it's like but it's totally healthy to fantasize of course it's healthy to fantasize, but religion well, fucks with people's minds. It sounds like they're the Duggar wrong. family. It sounds like yeah. the Duggar family, and thank God yes. they're not on TV, America. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. 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 Fantasy is normal. It it's is. It's so normal. Imagination. But talking about fantasy is difficult. Yes. It's and it's scary. I think it, probably because of our over more more sexualized um, culture now. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's more sexualized; it's just we're talking about it more. Right. So then it gives people more entryways to talk about it with their own partners. Right. Good talk. All right, you guys. This was so fun. This was fun. Thank what a you. Blast. All right. What a riot. Let's do it again. Let's okay. do it again like five minutes from now. Okay. The mind is All right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> You've listened to the neighbor ladies here on the Alive and Social Network. Share it with your friends. See you next time. Do you have it? Does anybody have what Bernie, what actually, like ver- verbatim what happened in the Black Lives Matter thing when you got interrupted? I do not. I just uh, I just know it was in Oregon, right? <clears throat> uh, here it is. Um, well, unless, Colleen, do you want to just introduce it? Since sure. it's right by you. Sure. I don't want to, like, screw it up. We've had many of phenomenal minutes and hours and half hours in here, but the last hour and a half has been awesome. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank I you. thought it was fantastic. One question for you. Will your friend be offended by her by you bringing her up in that situation? I don't think it's a podcast, so it matters, but just want to make sure. No, she's not. I mean, I never used her name, right? No. No, you didn't. No, but I just want to make yeah. sure I ask you that before I publish it in case, you know. Cause no, but everyone's going to be like, who was it? Yeah, exactly. And Which, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. You're following at comedy clubs. After anybody hears that, it's going oh. to increase immensely. Not that you you got you got you got you got a following, girl. You're coming up. And I did this. I did this because I was sorry. We got to get back to it. But no, no, you're fine. But I no, just this thought, is good. I did downtime. this because I was so excited for you because you know we sit and have coffee out in the suburbs and somebody goes, oh, he's just not performing for me. And I'm listening to my my friend, and I'm I'm like, so what are you doing for him? Yeah. What are you bringing to the table? What's your side of the street like? Are you wearing that flannel nightgown that you promised me you'd get the hell out of here? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, because I'm ruthless. I'm like, okay, because, you know, you, I don't like to sit and bitch about my man. you, you, you got to look at both sides. Of the so that's what that was about. Oh. Yeah, you go, girl. You go, girl. All right, back to oh. it. That was <laughs> awesome. That's a good point. It wasn't a Lutheran, you can be saved. It was a, oh. Oh, you, go, girl. <laughs> you can be no, saved. No, Lutherans can't be saved. They can't, and that's why I like them. <laughs> I know. There's no saving them. This is if you could protest anything, what would it be? If you could have dinner with one president, who would it be, dead or alive? Yep. Sounds well, good. I don't know. Let's, let's finish strong. We're gonna. Can we do the president first? You want me to? Or wait, what do you mm. want, what do you want to finish with? The president? Yeah, I want to finish with the president. Okay. The president. I don't know what I'm gonna say for that one yet. I, mine would be Abe Lincoln for sure. Yeah. Honest Abe. Honest God, Abe. why did he marry Mary Todd? What was the attraction there? Holy crap! <laughs> she looked just like Sally Field. Yeah, the flying nun. He had a flying <laughs> nun fantasy. That was Roosevelt's wife wasn't too, you know. Well, neither was he. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. How about this? Like, I mean, did you guys see that uh, documentary about the Roosevelts that they had on? Uh, mm-hmm. Did you remember the part where they talked about how they had, like, sex houses on the White House campus? Like, yes. Prop- like, they yes. had literally homes on the White mm-hmm. House property where they would store women and men because mm-hmm. he had, his, well, both women, actually, because I think, she was dabbling on that side of it but for both of them they had their own little sex palace and if that was today do you realize like they would be shunned right you know mm-hmm. i just obviously it goes back to social media and how crazy it is now but think about that but they kind of do anyways i think they still do it like on I'm the low sh- you know what i mean I'm they just sure. don't have the houses yeah. or whatever but yeah, yeah but it's just like sh- they kept people in the back here as well and crazy. i never they, yeah they, they, a whole other conversation is was JFK and, and, and other presidents, were they really fooling around? Was it really oh, that? Yes. No, I mean, I know they were, but was it really that big a deal? I mean, you know, it's People like, want to make it a big deal. Well, I don't know. Marilyn like, Monroe is a big deal. She yeah. was. I mean, well, she, she is got a the big wrong deal. She's huge, wrong man. End of that yeah, deal. I mean, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Hurry up and kill her. Very you know? sad. I kind of wanted to get with Bobby, too. Yeah. Is Bobby, isn't do. Bobby the one that ditched the girl in the pond? No, Teddy. No, no, that's, no Teddy. that's Teddy. Sorry, sorry. No, I'd say mm-hmm. hard to keep the Kopechny family straight. That was Mary Jo Kopechny, a well-known, uh, you know. I grew up out there, so that was mm-hmm. a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. All, all right. right, so <coughs> we all ready to rock and roll? Yes. Okay, we're on air. I'm going to play the music, and whoever takes it over, takes it over. Five, four, three, two, one.
Hi, ho neighborinos. It's that time again. It's time for the neighbor ladies. You're listening to the neighbor ladies here on the Alive and Social Network. I'm Colleen. We've got our other favorite neighbor ladies here. We've got Boston. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. What day is it? Love to be here. <laughs> we've got Karen J. Good evening. <laughs> and we've got Suzanne. Hi. Hi. All right. And Grant. Hi, Hello. Grant. Hello. Hey, Colleen. Hi. Grant, our handyman, he keeps us, he keeps us in check. He keeps uh, <clears throat> keeps this thing rolling. Okay, you guys. On Saturday, what day is it today? On Saturday, Wednesday. Yeah, activists affiliated with the Black Lives Matter movement interrupted a Bernie Sanders rally in Seattle to criticize his campaign for paying insufficient attention to issues of criminal justice and race. Dun, dun, dun. Does this sound familiar? Because something similar happened last month at the Progressive Conference uh, Netroots Nation. Black Lives Matter protesters interrupted a town hall meeting with Sanders and fellow Democratic presidential candidate Martin O'Malley. Martin O'Malley, he's 50. Um, <laughs> the activists didn't feel that Sanders, and just as importantly, his supporters are keeping racial justice front and center. Sanders has become a progressive hero for his economic populism, but at the beginning of his campaign, he's talked about uh, his, his, at the beginning of his campaign, he talked about racial inequality, if at all, as a symptom of economic inequality. And to Black Lives Matter uh, activists and sympathizers who spent the last year or more calling attention to the deaths of young black men and women, many at the hands of police, Sanders, this attitude towards race was all too familiar. Generations of white progressives have kept economic issues at the center of progressism and issues that affect mostly non-whites at the margins. They've challenged Sanders to make racism and mass incarceration as important to his campaign as Social Security. So what do you think, you guys? I, I feel like it was ultimately a good thing, personally, because... Yeah, Bernie's fighting the good fight, but it's not just an economic situation. This is... I mean, I didn't like... Initially, I didn't like how they just interrupted it or whatever. I Like, I don't know. But I understand why they did it, and it's important that... And it worked. It was effective. I just think, you know, there's other ways to go about it, maybe. I don't know. Like, I can't see them getting away with that if Hillary... Well, they wouldn't, which is why they did it at Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's exactly, I think, why they did it. And I think it was uh, well thought out of, okay, which, because you know it's more of a Democratic group, and they're leaning that way, and they're like, okay, we got to get the word out. This campaign isn't really focused on the issues. Who do we have the best chance with to to become our voice and to start that type of conversation? And and I I think it was... Brilliant. I mean, although I, I, I hate, I, I like Bernie. I think it was, yeah, it had, it had to be done, and I, th- I think a lot of good will come out of it. Um, well, I, good has already come out of it, hasn't he? Just he, um, didn't he just hire? He hired a Black Lives Matters. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah. A spokesperson, yeah, right? right? Mm-hmm. So that's going to keep that's going to keep him on on point. So now he's got the black vote and the millennial well, vote. I think part of this... I, oh, go ahead. You can't say anybody's got any one vote altogether, but I, I, like that, I like that he listened. He recognized the problem. He brought that person in as a solution to represent that group. And I think then that... that speaks volumes. Because yeah. I think if it happened at a Hillary yeah. deal, it would just get hushed up. Or maybe the, it would get, not get hushed up, but it would be like, oh, they're taking away from this and they're taking away from that. There wouldn't be any of her saying, oh, yeah, that, that's concerning to you? Well, let me do this. How can I listen you know to I you mean? better? I, I right. think she would just reply right now with, hey, send me an email. Everyone else is. <laughs> you know. I think Bernie <laughs> Sanders, you know, he's going to be, he's gonna be 74 um, in a couple weeks. And he was, you know, he participated in the march on Washington. Um, he's he's been an activist for a long, long time, and I think a a big part of this is just in in how he was captured through words. I think it has a lot to do with being PC, yeah. and and taking PC maybe a little too seriously. I think he's a good man. I think um, 
I think so you we're, think it was kind of bullshit that they did this. I think them. it was complete bullshit. Even though the the how it's come out in the wash is that he's hired this woman. It's going to and he's doing that because uh, of of everything PC. You know, he's playing the game. Yeah. It's she's going to be a great spokesperson. She'll be him. a great spokesperson, and yeah. it probably will be good for him. But you know, it's it, it, once again, there's just so many layers of artificial bullshit attached yeah. to it, it. It feels like to me, it's all a circus. It is all a circus. Oh my god! I mean, it's a circus, but I, I, I still, I still respect the fact that he recognized it, he acted on it, yes. and he got it done quickly. It wasn't done over a month's time. He I didn't think, think about it for ages. Right. Yeah. He just right. went, okay, let's just handle this, man. And that's what I really like. Yeah, it, there is a lot of circus going on, but I, I think the thing we need to look at with Bernie is you're bringing up some of his early the stuff that he's done. He's been around for a long time. A long time. And he has grassroots organizational Absolutely. skills that could be very beneficial yes. to this election and pulling some things off. Whether right. he's a serious candidate at the end of it or not, he's he's got that, that background that uh, he we does. may need. You know, I, I saw this meme on Facebook the other day, and I was just going to try to find it, but I think I'll just speak uh, off the cuff here without... It was uh, a list of Bernie Sanders' top donators versus yeah. Hillary's top donators. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for her, it's all corporations. Sure. And for him, it's all unions. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's corporations versus people. Right. Right? So that'll tell you a lot right there. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so, like, I had this joke that I, I wrote the last election, and I think it would be really cool to bring it in right now between all the political candidates. And it's not so much a joke. I started thinking about this. And, okay, so you have a reality show with both sets of political candidates when we finally get down to the last four. Mm-hmm. And they have to show their survival skills in like an alligator rescue show. And that way, we would, first of all, they would love it because they're on TV and they all want to see their face. On it, so we get Trump and his wife, and they have to come up with their own clothes, their own way of capturing the alligators and saving them, and they have to prove how it would be beneficial to society. And I know in the last election, are you high? No, I'm not high, but I think I think a reality show. Give them a test that is so outside. Let them create their own crap. Let's give them a scenario where they have to utilize all this talented BS. And I just think it would be hysterical. Okay, well, before we get down to the final election, America, Congress has voted and said you must participate in a reality TV show <laughs> and prove your survival skills. May the odds do you be know, ever in your favor. No, do you, know the, do you, do you yeah. know the show on um, the Weather Channel where the fat guys are dropped off to see if they live um, in <laughs> no, the forest? This that is sounds a great, like a great show. diet plan. No, but it, it is. <laughs> I okay. want to do that show. And, and they're left with, I mean, I think they give them like a match or something and they have to go out and kill their own Square food with a stick. Paper. Think about it. Think, think about it too. Um, they, I, I just, okay, I mean, I've gone off on a tangent, but no, I just think that uh, this, is this whole show is about there. tangents. I like <laughs> it. When we come back, is our political system corrupt? You're listening to the neighbor ladies. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. Suzanne, what would if you could protest anything, what would it be? Evangelicals. Their existence. Mm-hmm. All right. Karen J. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. What would be the one thing you would protest if you could protest anything? Black cats, lives matter. Oh. oh it's important to bring cats. awareness because... Um, in the feline community, black cats are discriminated against. Are they really? Yes. Oh, yeah, they're they so are. pretty. They're unlucky. And um, they're just like any other cat, except for their first eight lives were taken by police brutality. So I have a black cat, Rose. Black cat lives matter, people. Okay. Wow. I'm on it. Yeah. I like I, it. I think uh, dinner later, well, let's talk about these cats. Yeah. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. Boston, if you could protest anything, what would it be? the two-party political system in this country. Change it, baby. Change it. Amen. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. And Colleen, what would be the one thing you could protest if you could protest anything? I would like to... Well, the good thing is is that uh, I'm, an, I'm an American and I can protest anything I want to and I have the right to gather myself and uh, anybody else that uh, 
uh, sees sees fit to join w with me, and we can protest anything. And right now, I would like to take a stand against outrage. All right. I, I am outraged about outrage. Yes. I am outraged about ridiculous outrage. Yes. Because it's all a smokescreen. When you're outraged about shit that doesn't matter. Right. Black right. lives do matter, but when you're outraged about shit that doesn't matter, yes. it creates smoke. You're just blowing smoke out of your ass at that point, Absolutely. and it creates this huge smoke screen, and then you can't see anything. You can't Stop see, with yeah. the outrage. You can't yeah. solve the problem because of the smoke. Also, right. yellow lives matter, too. Oh, totally. Yellow lives totally. matter, too. White lives matter. Brown lives, well, mm, you know, they matter, too. <laughs> All lives matter, but yeah. you get with I mean, the yeah. black lives matter. You get what they're saying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Whew, welcome back. You're listening to the neighbor ladies, and uh, and you it, it, going on this two party political system that you want to fix, Boston. I want you to talk about that. Is our political uh, system broken? Yeah, I th I think it is. Is it corrupt? I uh, well, we, yes, definitely, definitely corrupt. Tell um, me what you think about that. Um, I. You know, I, I, it's corrupt when you think about the amount of time we spend on the election process and the amount of money that is spent on the election process. Yes. And, you know, the, the president gets in office for his first ter term. He spent a lot of time getting there. And then, you know, six months in, it's time to work on the next campaign. Okay, right. so where's, where's his job description? Right. And, okay, so tell me that you're not going to take money from the people that are going to back you during this whole eight-year process. You're se we're setting people up to have to participate in that. That's corrupt. The, the actual dollar amounts that we spend on this and the insane amount of time mentally as a country that we I'm getting way too serious. But no, we I spend so much time mentally on this election process. Meanwhile... One, what it was, I'm just thinking of... I'm getting um, outraged. Yeah, I'm getting outraged, too. <laughs> when I think about it, when you think now about... I'm outraged. Well, and then you think about it, and then we have food shelves going, hey, it's summer, yeah. and we don't have enough food, right. but you're going on vacation. And then we got, you know, we had that GOP thing last, you know, last Friday night, the debate, and, and then we're spending... So how much money is involved in that? And we've just started. What do we got, another 18 months till the election, and we got to listen to this? I am outraged. You know, and halfway, and I will say, 45 minutes into the GOP thing, my kids looked at me and said, this was a nice family event. Let's go do something. We went upstairs and played a game, you know, because it was like, there's nothing more that's going to change on tonight's show. We know Trump is the focus. We know Jeb's going to get a one-liner, and we know Scott Walker's cute. That's what we learned. But corrupt, absolutely. It's corrupt that Trump was made the center of attention. It's corrupt that so much of our mental health is tied into this crap. And you know, I, 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 I'm like, okay, how do you change it? You know, if you're a parent, you can change it parenting. If you're a real honest friend having a cup of coffee, look somebody in the eyes and go, like, seriously? Seriously, we're gonna spend $1.5 billion on advertising? I'm just throwing that number out. I don't know the exact amount total it's that more. candidates are spending. But seriously, when you think about a school district where one out of every four kids is on the free and reduced lunch plan, right. and then, okay, great, we're going to go spend this money with the richest country in the world, and we have the poorest kids per capita. You know, I could go on and on. And no, it, there isn't anything funny about that to me. Go to, you know, we have two parties in this country. What does Britain do? They have a six-week campaign period. That's when you can campaign. There are laws on what you can do in the media. Okay, we have freedom of press. Like we could still work with that. I like that too. Wouldn't mm -hmm. six weeks give those candidates time to get Absolutely. real and get serious? Yeah. I mean, and wouldn't more candidates want to do it if it was only six weeks? Yeah. Heck, I could do. I've got enough vacation time, maybe at the job. <laughs> I could do it in six weeks. That's why I haven't really run. That's the truth. No. But That's you know what perfect. I'm saying? It's like, yes. yeah, I feel passionate about this. I mean, God, what a bunch of crap, you know? Well, I remember growing up, it was never like this, you know? I no, mean, it just I'm, seems no, to have amped up. It wasn't up. like this. Yeah. I guess right. I think it's corrupt because um, the first time George W. got in office, he didn't win the popular vote, he won the electoral vote. And I don't think that that's right. 
that you can become president when you don't even win the popular vote. And, and, and so we need and, to get rid of the Electoral College. And really, because that way yeah. people's votes actually count, and you'll get more people out voting. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And Al Gore really should have been president, right? I, I mean, mean, that I, was the deal I with I do that. like what Bernie said. It's that uh, it should be a national holiday. Yes. It Absolutely. Should be an, election yeah. Day should be a national holiday yes. so that it sh more people should be able to get there and right. right. Yeah. Even though some people obviously would just take that day and be hungover and whatever, and they wouldn't do anything with it. But still, yeah. you'd get more people. But yeah, if they really knew their vote really mattered, mm -hmm. they would go out and vote. But it's because of things like Bush getting elected when he didn't win the popular vote. Like, that shouldn't be able to happen. The second time creeped me out. That was everyone so was creepy. so. Shocked I almost started by that. doing drugs again. That's why I. That's <laughs> why I, seriously, Jeb Bush is a candidate for the GOP. I mean, didn't they think this I know, that through? Creeps me is out the too. past erased from the minds of the leaders of the GOP right. party? And where's right. McCain on this? You know what I'm saying? Where are some of the the voices that you know? I mean, McCain looks like a reasonable guy now. Oh, I could go on at the, another tangent there, but he is 78, 79 years old now. Right. You know. Uh, we won't talk about Bernie Sanders. I mean, we, you know, he's 74, but um, anyways, I'm going, like I'm going down. That's like a spring chicken right now. Right now, I mean, yeah. Right. He's somebody in yeah. good right. health. Depends on who his running mate is. Yeah. I think know. that's kind of old to be president. I think it's... We've had, haven't we had older presidents? Reagan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for Does anybody God's really what happened to him. I mean, he started to lose his oh mind. Well, well, Nancy really was running the country, don't you think? Oh, I mean, she absolutely. had the red, yeah. they had absolutely. The red dress. Absolutely, with her anorexia. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> hey. And hey, say no to drugs. Please, pick a food <laughs> issue, Nancy, anything. And, you know, she was so thin. I can remember, you know, they'd always show a shot of her right out next to Helicopter One there. And I thought, God, shut that thing off. That girl's neck is going to get sucked right into the <laughs> Absolutely. blades. Absolutely. Please. <laughs> right. Unbelievable. But, you know, what? it is corrupt. It is corrupt, you yeah. know, and we could talk about Oliver North and the stuff that happened in uh, 86 with Reagan. Oh, you know, please. you could pick things out. I, I mean, blatant corruptness. But uh, but what do we want to do about it? What you know? I think that's a good break because when we when we come back, we are going to decide what we want to do about it. We're going to decide each neighbor lady. I'm going to ask you this question: What would you do if you got to be leader of the free world for one year, only one year? When we come back, you're listening to the neighbor ladies. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. Suzanne, if you could have dinner with one president, dead or alive, who would that be? I would have uh, dinner with Jimmy Carter, and the reason I would have dinner with Jimmy Carter is because he stole a penny from the collection plate at church when he was five years old, and uh, he, he got punished for that, but I give him a lot of credit. <laughs> he also had lust in his heart for women. <laughs> and he Remember likes jelly that? beans, right? Jelly beans. And I love that peanut was butter. Reagan. Reagan liked jelly beans. Oh, yeah. oh, oh peanuts. Yeah. Was it peanuts? Peanuts. He was peanuts. a peanut farmer. He was a peanut farmer. Right. Oh, yeah. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Karen J., if you could have lunch with one president, who would it be, dead or alive, and why? It'd have to be Slick Willie. Slick Willie. <laughs> He's hilarious. And I'd want to know, I want to know the inside scoop on Monica Lewinsky. And also Hillary. <laughs> you know, is she dabbling on the other side? <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. And Boston, if you could have lunch or dinner with one president, dead or alive, who would it be? It would absolutely be the person who, in my mind, should have been president uh, way back in 2002, and that would have been Walt, uh, Vice President Walter Mondale. Absolutely. Um, because I believe if Paul Wellstone had lived, it would have whole been, been a whole different turnaround. And I would love to have dinner with him. I had the opportunity to interview him uh, for college radio way back when, when he was vice president, when I was six. <laughs> and uh, I just think I just think Minnesota's got a treasure there, and we're so lucky. Yeah, I was six. I was such a high achiever doing broadcast news at WMMR, which is now AM73. Uh, now it's actually nine, uh, 950, which you may know of, Grant. Enough of me now. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. And Colleen, if you could have lunch or dinner with one president, dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, George Bush Jr., and here's why. Because I'd like to see if my spidey sense would be tingling. Because I always feel, and here's me, I always feel like I, I know when I'm in the presence of somebody that is um, trying to pull one over on me. Yeah. Or I feel like I know when I'm in the presence of somebody whose uh, intentions are, are truly evil. 
and that that guy made so many so many intentional uh, moves and so many mistakes that I, I, I would like to have dinner with him and I would like to see if my spidey sense would go off. Yeah. Because yeah. I wonder, I wonder how much of it yeah. really was through his thinking. Right. So I wonder, I just, I, I think it would be an interesting conversation and I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be an asshole. <laughs> I'd, I'd even make dinner. I'd make a nice dinner. Or, or would Dick Cheney be, Dick Cheney be silently I, sad at the table controlling it? How come it? he's so alive? I wouldn't. <laughs> We don't know, man. What heart medications are they using on this guy? You know, it's like he would be. Can't a, he'd be fun to play paintball with, wouldn't he? Oh my god! <laughs> run, Dick! Explode. Run! Here it comes! You know? Oh, oh god! Oh my ass! <laughs> <laughs> he gives back. just hunting season would be so much more fun with him around. <laughs> I know. You, oh, with your Nerf gun? <gasps> oh my god, my Nerf gun! Yeah, <laughs> somebody gave me another one. I got a big one, and then. Uh, one of the other neighbors gave me one of those big water soakers, so I'm Super having soaker. some fun. Super oh, soaker, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, I love those. In the hood. Yeah. And uh, they they haven't called the police on me, so it's good. I always wanted to write an uh, action <clears throat> film that was set in a grocery store where there's a battle, or no, set in a like a super target, and then somebody, like it's regular people taken hostage in a target, right? And then somebody gets the super soaker and fills it with a jug of olive oil, <laughs> And when the terror or the the terrorists are running, <laughs> then they super soak the floor, <laughs> and it's like mayhem. I yeah. don't know. I'm liking that. that. Yeah, yeah. I think I want to write that. Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, politics. Hey, you guys. So uh, the political system is corrupt. I think we figured that out last last segment. But uh, now we've get a chance in Pretend Town. <gasps> <laughs> We're going to pretend town. That's the pretend town. Sound. That's like every day in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm there a lot. I know. <laughs> Suzanne, I've just elected you president. Oh. But you only get to be president for one year. One year. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna do uh, Matterhorn Mountain for a year. That's okay. what I'm gonna do. What does that mean? Yeah, You're gonna go gonna, on a vacation. Just your whole term. I'm not gonna go to Disneyland. <laughs> I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let people ride on Matterhorn Mountain for a year, <laughs> nonstop, and, uh, oh, and see no, what happens. You don't have any answer for that? <laughs> Did you ever think when you were a kid, uh, I, I could be president, I want to be president, here's I, what I would do? I never did. Really? Never wanted to be president. No. But okay, no. so I've, but I've, I've, I've either blessed you or cursed you with this. Yeah. And you have to do something. So you're president. I have to do so, something. So what are you, what are you going to do? What would I do? Yeah. I would bring Jimi Hendrix back to life. Okay, you got to yes. think about it. I'm yeah. going to go oh. to Karen J. We can bring people back to life? No, you can't. I'll just say Tupac. You, you get, <laughs> Karen J, I've made you president. What are you going to do? You get to be president for a year. Mm. One year. I would put all of the homeless people in all the foreclosed homes. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, love it, love it. Yeah. I would yeah. revoke all the driver's licenses of all the Somalian cab drivers. <laughs> That's not PC at all. I know. <laughs> but as an Asian woman, I think you could do I that. I can do I that. I think you can do that. Because right? it's because not you're safe. Notoriously bad drivers. It's not safe. It's just they're worse than Asians. <laughs> um, the Mexicans, I don't know. I guess I just let them be. <laughs> Since that's would you bring the Mexican yeah, into like, office with you? You're no. dipping everybody no. up. Would you dump him? Would you dump him for a better man? Or president. a woman, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, maybe I'd make him be like security because he's pretty sneaky. Like, you know, I he could be that. undercover as like the lawn maintenance guy, but then really he's security. Did mm -hmm. you see her eyes on that? Look at yeah. that! Look at those eyes. Man. And also, pants would be optional in the workplace. Oh yeah. All right. That's yeah, it could be it. anything. All right, Boston. Um, You're president for a year. Okay. I'm coming back to you, Susan. Are you? Yeah, we yes, got to get back. You didn't oh answer it. You have to answer All it. All right. She sounded so CIA on her response. Yeah. Was, in fact, speaking of the CIA, I, the first thing I would like is to find out, are they really doing anything about ISIS? Because I think they're seriously an issue. And what would you do, though? You're um, president for a year. I would make sure the CIA is totally doing what they're supposed to do in that area, and I, I would want to make sure that we're solving the problem overseas um, by helping the countries where it is infiltrated, and I would want to see internationally other countries helping us help that problem. Because I think right now 
uh, you know, we have an issue where we go over and we do something, and I'm not necessarily sure if people want us doing stuff, you know. Right. I want to make sure who's playing the game, and are we really going to solve the problem there. And the second thing is I'm really concerned about global war warming. And I know that's two very diverse issues, but I don't think anyone's really taken it seriously at the top. I, I don't think there's any action plan with our government. It's just we're attending meetings, a lot of meetings. I think Hollywood celebrities are spending more time getting stuff done. And, you know, maybe it's time to, to look at that. And I, I know agree. I'm all over the road, but I haven't had a chance to write this job description. No. <laughs> um, but I, I think that that's, those are two issues that could seriously annihilate the planet. I mean, you know, ISIS is a very strong movement, and uh, many, many, and we've seen it in our own Twin Cities, where there are people that are, are behind them, you know, and we're not talking about that. It's like, oh, that'll just go away. Our government will take care of those people. And I, I don't know. I don't think that's Minnesota nice. I think it's people are... Like head in the sand. Head in the sand. Sorry about the, the desert pun there, but oh, you know, I guess I didn't. No, I, I didn't you know, you know what I'm was, saying. But I was, but seriously, not, they don't want to think it's an issue. Not what I was trying issue. to say. But no, yeah. but you know what I mean. So so we're you know so that's what I would do. It's and a figure of speech, damn it. We got one year. No, I thought it was yeah, pretty I knew, funny myself, I knew. but. But, but, but those are two issues that, that I'm pretty passionate about because people are not looking at this. I mean, when you, when you talk about taking, last week, they take 15 women, put them in a cage because they wouldn't have sex with them and behead them. And we just kind of go on and listen, and we find out what the Kardashian family is doing in the next news article on the Yahoo trend. Eh, we got some issues. So I would want to, you know, work on that. Just two, just to start. And I would also enjoy having dinner at the White House. I hear the chef is good. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. I'm all about the food, girls. Let's get real, okay? I love the food. I would hire uh, Colleen to make desserts. Oh, my God, Colleen. Wouldn't Thank it be? You. Yeah, who would you hire in that year, too? Yeah. Would, you, would you be? I'd actually would hire you? somebody else to be president. Yeah? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I, would I would have the opportunity, but mm -hmm. they would be like the double secret president. And yeah. everything I said would sound amazing because it would actually be coming out of their mouth. I mean, you know, I think I would, I would trust my judgment to do the right thing, but I just wouldn't know how to get there. Right. See what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. See what right. I mean? Yeah. But th th that's the thing. You don't have to be the smartest person mm -hmm. in the room. You just have to know the smartest person. Yes. yes. You have to have access to them. Yes. Michelle Obama, like. she's going to need a job soon. So she yeah. could do that. I'd that, hire yeah. her as my personal trainer because I want those oh biceps. God. Yeah. I'm, I'm like been working on the bingo wings, but you know, still, we'll stay with the longer t shirts. Thank you. The bingo wings. Oh, oh you Suzanne. guys. Suzanne. What? Good talk. All right. I think this was really fun. She didn't answer. Something. Oh, she didn't answer? Suzanne, Thank you got out of that question. Yeah, I, but, <laughs> what question? <laughs> oh, my God. It's we'll have to save it for next somebody week. Somebody feed we her. Clean for a day. We got to get her some dinner. Oh we will. I can't believe you got out of it. You, got, a, you got out of it this time. <laughs> yeah. Next time. <laughs> Yeah, and we didn't find we're out about her. We're coming for you next time. For you. Yeah, and we didn't find out about her secret sex life and fantasy. We, you know, oh. all of us, all of us went to the table oh, on that on. chick, right? Come you on, know. you didn't really go to the table on the fantasy. Yeah, thing. really. Did she want a man in uniform. uniform? I talked intimately about and then my she husband. Also said that my daughter's listening costumes. to this later. I, you know, and she's. I know, still, but you know. I know you're way kinkier than that, Boston. I well, just know it. I hope we have a few more shows to explore. There's layers to you too. I know it. Will we ever find out Suzanne's fantasies? Will we ever find out Boston's <laughs> true political leanings? Oh, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Next week <laughs> on The Neighbor Ladies. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next week. Going to go home and find a guy in uniform. Woo! <laughs>